we have Simon Tucker. Hi, guys. Oh, that works. Cool. Um, so I built a, a video chat room with WebRTC and Meteor and um, React and Flux. And I was trying to decide what I should talk about with you guys today. First, I would just show it. Um, I named it Quasar, by the way. Quasar is a, it's like a really bright galaxy. It's a stupid name. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, it, it's a lot like Google Hangouts in that you just have um, Hangout and then someone joins. And then, ta-da, like magic. Oh, here we are. Uh, I'll turn off the sound. There we go. But we have a... No, oh, it's still talking. All right, whatever. And you can do up to like four or five people with it. And it was pretty simple. I did it in a couple weeks. Um, so I thought I would talk a little bit about Flux. Let's talk about Flux. Because people are talking about WebRTC. It's pretty cool. But maybe you know React just um, became a first class citizen for Meteor. So let's talk a little bit about um, what Facebook likes to use with React. Um, so Flux, let me make this a presentation. So Flux is this architecture um, that Facebook strongly recommends for using with React. And essentially, it's this uh, event-driven architecture that says um, we only go through the cycle once every time something changes on the UI or something changes in, in the data. And we don't want things to get messed up, um, like components talking to each other or something like that. Um, and it can be pretty sweet. So in the case of like um, a video chat app, you might have a, a feature like when someone comes on to to add on the video chat, you want to be able to identify that someone's been added so there's like a single source of, of truth data for what's going on. And when someone joins the chat, now there's additional data. That data is then pinged from this thing that they like to call a store. So a store says, hey, someone just signed up and is joining the chat. And it sends this Im information out and just uh, it's an, <laughs> emits an event. And anything that's listening to that event will then trigger a UI change. So something that might care about that is like a, um, the main screen, which says, oh, someone just joined the chat. Now they're the primary screen on the, the chat. So we're going to update that. And then that's how it works. And then so if you clicked on something on the UI, the UI would then send an event to the store and say, hey, I want to change some data. And then the store is going to change that data. And then it's going to emit an event again. And any component that cares about that data changing will then get that information and then update accordingly. And so that's pretty sweet. But something to consider about Flux is that there is like no documentation for it. It's a really nice idea, but um, it's, it's really hard to figure out um, initially. So maybe it's good to have some demos, which is why I created this thing. It's open source. It's, it's on GitHub. You can play with it. Um, uh, so there's a decent learning curve. And it's not very obvious with Meteor. Um, like I ran into a bunch of race conditions when I was using trackers as an example. But some of the things that are really nice about Meteor is that you know you have this reactive data, so you don't have to do a lot of things to check when data is changing. Data just changes, and then the way that React works with Meteor is so nice that it just says like, hey, should I be should I be changing the this uh, React component or not? And you just say yes. Um, and so reactive variables were my friend when I was building this app. So I, um, definitely check it out if you're interested in that sort of stuff. Um, and there are also a bunch of really great Meteor packages to get you started if you want to start using Flux. Um, some of those include Meteor Flux, which is uh, just like a wrap around the dispatcher that Facebook puts out to use Flux. And, um, and yeah, so I think you should try it, because you'll definitely like it. Um, I, I personally am typically a, an Angular user. I do a lot of work for Google, so I was just trying to do something um, in my free time and wanted to check out React and check out Flux. So this was like the first application I ever built with it. It only took a couple of weeks, so the learning curve is you know, super fast, except for the documentation part. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to take any questions about uh, React or Flux or WebRTC from a total noob um, who you know, put this stuff together pretty quickly. <laughs> Any questions? Oh, uh, for the thing? Yeah, it's called quasar.meteor.com. I know that's I really got to change that name, huh? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and check it out on GitHub. Do your thing. Yes. Why are you using Voice Turn and Turn servers for what you all to see? I'm just using Google servers, like the Turn and the the Stun servers that they offer you for free. 
Um, yeah, so one thing that's cool about WebRTC, you guys need to know, is like if you're just building it from scratch, um, none of the, the streaming is happening on your Meteor server. It's happening on separate servers. It's happening between the browsers themselves. Meteor is just this middle ground that says, that's doing like a handshake. It says, hey, can I share my data with you? Oh yeah, I can share my data with you. And then, uh, and then the browser does the rest of the work with a server, and like you can probably you know, use a more extensive server if you're gonna be doing it for millions of people or something, but you know, for something like this, it's free stuff. Yeah? Can you, can you run in so that's the next thing I want to do with it, is play with it in Cordova. But yes, there are plugins for, so um, WebRTC works on Firefox and Chrome out of the gate, which is billions of users, which is really nice. And then a bunch of people have built Cordova stuff, um, iOS uh, native stuff, and Android native stuff. Um, so yeah, you can do it with anything, but that'll be the next thing I put together. Uh, the, the question was like, can you do it um, on a mobile app in Cordova? Yeah. Do you find the store concept in the Flux architecture to sort of be a combination of model and controller sort of put together? Yeah, it's, it's really similar to a lot of, uh, sorry, um, uh, is, is the Flux architecture a lot like a um, MVV? Store concept, is it a yeah. combination of model and con controller put together? Yeah, so is the store concept like a combination of model and controller put together? <sighs> you know, it's like, it's a lot similar to the, MVVM frameworks and stuff, stuff like that that people use. It's, it's all really similar. Uh, but the thing that I like about it that makes sense for React is um, components don't need to know any, anything about each other. They only listen to one um, true source of data. And the nice part about it is that it's always happening in this event loop so that you never have things clashing with each other. Um, <laughs> like There are so many ways we could say that they're similar or different. Um, so I, I don't want to get too deep into that, and also, I'm, you know, someone might yell at me if I got something wrong there. But I, I'll just tell you, those are the things that I like about it. Can you have one more question? All right. All right, we're good. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys.